Hi, this is Usha. Welcome to Rathod's IS classes. Today in this lecture, we are going to see current affairs of 16th July 2022. So let's get started with our discussion and let us try to see our first article. So first article, it is about one important scheme that is Beti Bachao Beti Padao. Okay, so this scheme is very important from your GS paper 2 point of view and you can expect mainly prelims and also mains question from this topic for sure. So title says Beti Bachao Beti Padao to be extended to all districts. So here this article which is saying that so this scheme that is Beti Bachao Beti Padao scheme it is to be extended to all districts. So this article is very important. And first, let us try to see what is the context, why it is in use. So, if you see context, it mainly says that here this Beti Bachao, Beti Padao will now be extended across the country. Actually, this scheme, it is a central flagship program and it is mainly comes into which ministry? That is Ministry of Women and Child Development. So, this point is at most important from your problems. So in prelims you can get a question like so they will be asking you one scheme and under which ministry it mainly works okay so in this way you can expect a question so here this Beti Bacha or Beti Padavo scheme which mainly comes under women and child development ministry and actually it mainly focusing on education of girl child and even it is mainly focusing on improving of sex ratio so what are the twin objectives of this scheme so first one is mainly focusing on education of girl child. So first one is education of girl child. Second one is improving of sex ratio. Okay, so these are the twin objectives of this scheme. And now let us try to see some important details. So the first and the foremost thing you have to remember is, so this scheme which may launch in a year, 2015 in January so this scheme launched in January 2015 and here it is mainly focusing on addressing of sex selective abortion sex selective abortion and also we are seeing there is a declining of child sex ratio so what is this uh, sex selective abortion so if you're from arts background you might be not aware about this sex selective abortion Sex selective abortion is simple words. Here, pregnant women, they will be going to diagnostic center and they will be checking whether the fetus you are carrying, it is a male or female. If it is a female, they will be going for abortion. So, this kind of abortion is called as sex selective abortion. So, because of this sex selective abortion, that is female feticide, so there is decreasing of this child sex ratio. That means the number of child who are girls who are less compared to the of boys and as of now it is like 918 girls for every thousand boys so this is the data as per 2011 census so it is a joint initiative which mainly came up by ministry of women and child development along with ministry of health and family welfare and ministry of human resource development okay so this beti bachao beti padavo it is initiative of ministry of women and child development and Ministry of Health and Family Welfare and Ministry of Human Resource Development. And this program, which is mainly operational in 405 districts at present. So this is very, very important. And if you're talking about guidelines, which is given by Ministry of Women and Child Development for this Mission Shakti. So these guidelines are very important. So the important aim under this Mission Shakti, it is for zero budget advertising okay so nearly eight percentage of fund has been used for advertising of this beti pajao beti padao scheme and here this mission sector is focusing on zero budget advertisement and next one here is so they are also focusing on encouraging greater spending on activities okay for example promoting of sports among women self-defense camps construction of women toilets making availability that is sanitary pads and next one is awareness about this pcp and dt act so here what is this pcp and dt that is pre-consumption prenatal diagnostic test act so according to this pcp and dt act 
so here the gender reveal will not be happened so there is a ban on gender reveal when we are going for diagnosis right so because of uh, this uh, there is ban on this gender reveal yes we can see there might be increasing of this uh, female number and even we can achieve the good child sex ratio so if you go to any scan center example for if you are pregnant and if you go to any scanning center so they will be taking acknowledgement that they didn't reveal the sex and even wherever you can see, you if you go to this diagnostic center so you can see we are not going to reveal the sex and the revealing of sex is also a crime okay so this type of the things that we can see on the posters in the diagnostic centers such that that will make especially to people aware regarding whether they are revealing the sex or not and they can understand about what is a species pntt act as well okay so these are some important activities they are mainly focusing on so apart from that they also came up with new targets so this new targets are focusing on improving of sex ratio at birth okay and improvement of percentage of institutional deliveries okay institutional deliveries means nothing but deliveries which are mainly happening in the hospitals so especially in the, in the olden days especially in the rural areas even now we can see the deliveries which is happening in the houses so whenever the deliveries are happening in the houses there is no proper antibiotics can be used and there is no proper procedure that can be followed so because of this there is high chance of getting infection for the mother and that is one of the leading cause for the maternal mortality rate and even infant mortality rate so now the new targets under this mission shakti are the first one here is to improve the percentage of institutional deliveries and even to improve the sex ratio at birth and next one here is to check the drop out rate so one percentage of increase in enrollment at secondary education level and skilling of girls and women per years is targeted okay so here we are focusing on one percentage of increasing enrollment at secondary education level so i'm not talking about here primary but i'm talking about the secondary and even skilling of girls and women okay so they are also targeted here so one important problem in our education system here is yes gross enrollment ratio is high but learning outcomes are low and if you're talking about one more important point under this mission shakti is strengthening of one stop centers so we are mainly going to set up to help women who are facing violence and women who are facing this domestic violence and as well as trafficking so under this about 300 one stop centers they had been set up in the districts okay so that the crime against the women they are decreased and we are mainly focusing on especially in this aspirational districts and we are also focusing on raising awareness about safe menstrual hygiene management so during this uh, menstrual cycles so which are which are very much common for the women so women who are in the reproductive age they will come uh, they will come across with this menstrual cycles so in this menstrual high cycles especially the people from the rural areas they will be using some unsanitary unsanitary products like leaves like cloths etc so here we need to raise awareness about the safe menstrual hygiene management and even under this mission shakti we also came up with this 24 hours women helpline number and the number here is 181 and we also came up with this nari adalat so this nari adalat which mainly provides women with an alternate dispute resolution or alternate grievance redressal mechanism okay for example if there is any harassment or subversion or curtailing of rights of uh, rights or entitlements so they can go for this alternate grievance redressal uh, mechanism that is nari adalat and if you are talking about this mission shakti how it works so this is the infographic i collected directly from this indian express that is additional 300 one stop centers to be set up and next one here is government which is also going to introduce free day care creche facilities so creche facilities means nothing but so if there is a lactating mother that means she is giving breastfeeding to her child so there will be some facility in the offices so there there she can go and there she can uh, feed her baby and next one here is halfway homes to be set up under this anti trafficking units and here victims they are mainly kept and they will be give some work and next one here is hubs for empowerment of women that are going to be set up at central districts and as well as at state levels okay so in this way here mission shakti which mainly works and now let us try to 
राइट एन आंसर फॉर ए क्वेश्चन दैट इज एनालाइज बेटी बचाओ बेटी पढ़ाओ स्कीम फ्रॉम द प्रिजम ऑफ सोशल इंपावरमेंट सर ना यू हैव टू राइट अबाउट वॉट इज इज बेटी बचाओ बेटी पताओ स्कीम इन इंट्रोडक्शन एंड बॉड यू हैव टू राइट अबाउट वॉट आर द पॉजिटिव फ्रॉम द सोशल इंपावरमेंट पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू एंड वॉट आर द नेगेटिव एंड फाइनली यू कैन कंक्लूड द आंसर सो दिस इज स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ द आंसर एंड ना लेट इज ट्राई टू सी द नेक्स्ट टॉपिक इट इज अबाउट यू ए यू ए इज टू बिलियन डॉलर्स एंड यू एस इज ट्रेल टेक्नोलॉजी फॉर इंडिया फूड पार्क सो दिस आर्टिकल विच इज मेनली टॉकिंग अबाउट आई टू यू टू इनिशिएटिव सो इन दिस आई टू यू टू इनिशिएटिव दे सेट दैट दे आर गोइंग टू कम अप विद दिस फूड पार्क सो दिस अबाउट द टॉपिक एंड दिस टॉपिक विल बी इम्पॉर्टेंट फ्रॉम योर इंटरनेशनल रिलेशन विच मेनली कम्स इन योर जी एस पेपर टू एंड ना लेट एस ट्राई टू सी दिस टॉपिक इन ए वेरी ग्रेट डिटेल So, if you see context, it mainly says that UAE, United Arab Emirates, okay, UAE announced that they are going to invest US dollars two billion to develop series of integrated food parks across India. So, they said that they are going to come up with series of integrated food parks across India. So, this is the one important thing. So, what is the important objective behind the investment? So, we are talking about investment. It mainly helps to tackle food insecurity so it is mainly focusing on tackling of food insecurity in the south asia and as well as middle east region so if you see details it mainly says that uaa united arab emirates they are going to invest in this indian food pri food parks okay so they are going to come up with this uh, food parks so under this i2u2 i2u2 leaders they said that uae which is hope to international renewable energy agency that is arena and it is going to host this cop 28 in 2023 and it is going to invest about 2 billion dollars to develop the series of this food parks across india so if we're talking about us and israel to provide expertise in this field so here the private sectors from us and as well as israel they will be invited to lend their expertise and to offer some innovative solutions that mainly contribute for the overall sustainability of this project so whenever we are coming up with any project yes sustainability is very very important and these investments that will helps to maximize the crop yields and even that will be helpful for mainly to tackle this uh, food insecurity as well so hybrid renewable energy project in gujarat so it will also consist of 300 megawatts of wind and as well as solar capacity okay in the gujarat and this one here is they are also coming up with a science based solution to enhance food security so it will mainly build more innovative more inclusive science based solutions to enhance food security and as well as sustainable food systems it is also focusing on agriculture innovation mission for climate initiative so india has shown interest in joining the united states and uae israel in agriculture innovation mission for climate initiative so here we are also going to get some science based solutions and especially that will helpful for food security of the country and even sustainable food systems and this one here is agriculture innovative mission for climate initiative so they are also mainly focusing on united states and uae israel and especially in the field of agriculture innovation mission climate initiative and this one here is we are also focusing on support for this abraham accord so i to you to leaders they reaffirm that they are mainly going to provide some support for this abraham accord and other peace and as well as normalization arrangements and if you're talking about this i2u2 it is initially formed in october 2021 and it is mainly followed by this abraham accords so this is between this eastern and as well as uae so in this abraham accord they are mainly focusing on maritime security infrastructure development and as well as transportation so here if you're talking about in this international forum for economic cooperation which mainly called as this west asian quad so this west asian quad is nothing but i to u2 so this i to u2 initiative which is mainly the new grouping of india israel usa and as well as uae so some important areas where there is a cooperation between these four countries is security cooperation technological hubs food security and as well as they will be work together in the different fields like climate change pandemics etc so these are some important facts regarding this i2u2 
And now let us try to see one question that appeared in this 2019 means India's relations with Israel have of late acquired a depth in diversity which cannot be rolled back. Discuss. So this question which appeared in your previous years of means of UPSC. And now let us try to see next question is regarding Abraham Accord. So which of the following is or or party to Abraham Accord? UAE, Oman, Bahrain and Israel. So here Oman which is not at all the part here. So UAE, Bahrain and Israel they are the part. So that option is 2, 1, 3 and 4 only. Now let us try to see next topic. It is a very interesting topic that is about Indian Bustard. So great Indian buy. So Bustard on Dodo track in Gujarat. So this article which is mainly talking about great Indian Bustard. So if at all any spaces that is seen in news, you will be having high chance of getting question in your prelims. So you have to be focused on some facts regarding this great Indian Bustard. So if you say context, it mainly says that due to lack of the action to convert overhead electric lanes into underground power transmission. So actually what happened, we will be having big towers like that. Okay. And the electric lanes would be present like this. So what happened because of this electric lanes, especially this great Indian Bustard, it is the heaviest flying bird. So here, whenever they are coming and contact with this electric lanes, they are getting electrocution and they are mainly losing their life. So because of this, there are number of times we mainly focused on conservation steps that need to be taken for this great Indian Bustard. So one of the step here is we need to convert this overhead lines into the on ground that is a power transmission through underground. So Gujarat and Rajasthan population of this great Indian burst which mainly continues to decrease. And if you see the current sex ratio, they are having just one male for three to five females. And if you are talking about some details regarding this great Indian bustard, so this great Indian bustard which count, okay, great Indian bustard count follows below 100. So I see in category here is critically endangered and the Wildlife Protection Act they are protected under Schedule 1 of this WPA. So here where we can see this great Indian Bustard in Rajasthan, in Gujarat, in some areas of here and here we can see this great Indian Bustard. And if you are talking about some facts regarding this great Indian Bustard, so this great Indian Bustard, it is one of the most critically threatened species in India. And there are, there are less than, okay, there are less than 150 birds they are left in India. And this great Indian bustard, they are of uh, the heaviest flying birds in India. So experts mainly say that in Rajasthan and as well as in Gujarat, they have the breeding okay, of this uh, great Indian bustard population. And this bird which is also found very, very, in very, very small numbers in Gujarat, in Gujarat, in Madhya Pradesh, in Karnataka, in Maharashtra and as well as in Andhra Pradesh. So this is about this topic and now let us try to see this infographic. So actually this infographic which mainly talks about this great Indian bustard. Actually it is one of the heaviest flying bird. Okay. And the height here is 3.3 feet tall and the weight is about 18 cages. And now you can imagine the weight of this great Indian bustard. And if you see the threats to these birds are about especially. So there are non-timber crops. And this one here is renewable energy projects, transportation as well as power lines, human instructions and as well as disturbances. And this one here is invasive and other problematic species. So these are some important threats which are mainly faced by this great Indian bustard. And this great Indian bustard which is mainly seen in some states like Andhra Pradesh, Gujarat, Karnataka, Maharashtra, Madhya Pradesh and as well as Rajasthan in India. So these are some important points that you have to remember for sure. And now let us try to see next topic. It is a very, very interesting topic. It is about Mangal Sutra. So removal of Mangal Sutra by wife is mental reality of highest order. So this is the thing which mainly said by this Madras High Court. So this topic is important from your polity point of view, which mainly comes under your GS paper too. So if you see context, it mainly says that removal of Thali, okay. So after once Hindu woman, he shares married means what happened in this marriage. So here, here there will be the thali. Thali will be tied. Okay. It is also called as Mangal Sutra. 
so whenever there is removal of this tali or this mangal sutra by a stranger wife so what is the meaning of this a stranger a strange means she is not affectionate she is living away from the husband a stranger wife would amount to subjecting such subjecting husband to mental cruelty in the highest order okay so whenever there is removing of tali or mangal sutra by a stranger wife would amount to subjecting the husband to mental cruelty at the highest order so this is the thing which mainly said by this madras high court okay and finally they granted divorce so if you see details actually there was one appeal which mainly made by c shivakumar he is working as a professional professor in medical college in erod so she filed a case and when woman was examined during this investigation process she admitted that at that time of separation she removed her tali chain tali chain it is nothing but it is a sacred chain worn by the wife as a token of her getting of her married okay so mainly to say that yes i am married i have to wear this mangal sutra for sure okay so though she proceeded to explain that she retained the tali and only the only she removed the chain so this is a chain okay let me show here so this is a chain of mangal sutra and this locket it is called as tali so there will be different shapes in the different states okay so she says that just i remove this chain but not this tali so her counsel that means the lawyer who is mainly uh, mainly from her side he said that in the section 7 of hindu marriage act Hindu Marriage Act, which mainly says that it is not necessary to wear this tali, hence it is mainly removed by the wife. Okay, so here the court, which mainly said that, so tying of tali, it is an essential ritual in the marriage ceremonies. In marriage ceremonies, so we are seeing that tying of this tali. Okay, so tali around the neck of a woman, it is a sacred thing, which symbolizes the continuous of a married life. and if it is removed okay if it is removed or actually this tali which is removed whenever the husband which who mainly died so whenever the death of husband happening at that time only this tali will be removed so therefore its removal by the petitioner's wife, petitioners or the wife they can be said to an act which reflected the mental cruelty at the highest order and finally here the divorce which mainly given okay so this is about this topic and now let us try to see next topic title says iit m ranked country top higher education institute so this topic is important from your education point of view which mainly comes in your gs paper too now let us try to see this topic in a very great detail so the indian institute of technology that is iit madras is at again the top higher education institute in the country and the second position which mainly occupied by iisc that is indian institute of science bangalore and third one it is by iit bombay so this is according to ministry of education's national institutional ranking framework 2022 so according to this national institutional ranking framework of this ministry of education so it mainly released this ranking okay it mainly said that iit madras which mainly occupied the first position and second one it is by iisc next one is by iit bombay and here in this infographic you can see the first one it is iit madras second one is iisc bangalore iit bombay third place iit delhi fourth place iit kanpur fifth place iit karakpur sixth place iit rukri rukri seventh place and iit guwahati eighth place and all india institute of medical sciences aims delhi which is ninth place and tenth one it is jawaharlal nehru university delhi okay so these are the rankings and you have to remember at least top 3 or top 4 and now if you see some more details which are given in this article it mainly says that among universities here iisc jawaharlal nehru university and jamia millia islamia jawadpur university amrita vishwa vidyapeetam they were among top 5 and apart from that five colleges include miranda house hindu college presidency college and loyala college and next one is lady shri ram college So here from this Lady Shri Ram College, Sina the B who secured All India Rank One. She is from this Lady Shri Ram College itself. And this one here is the top five medical institutions 
they are all india institute for medical sciences next one here is pg institute of medical education and research chandigarh next one is christian medical college national institute of uh, mental health and neurosciences next one is banaras hindu university so they are also top 5 medical institutes and top 5 management institutes they include iim ahmedabad iim bangalore iim kolkata iit delhi and as well as iim kozhikode and institutes they are also ranked across the seven domains so they include engineering management pharmacy law medical architecture and as well as dental so these are the seven important subject domains and if you are focusing on some facts regarding this nirf which may approved by ministry of education okay in september 2015 as it is the first ever effort by the government to rank higher education institutions in the country and the participation in this nirf which was made compulsorily compulsory for all government run education institutions in 2018 so we're talking about assessment and five parameters they mainly include teaching learning and resources they mainly include teaching learning and resources next one is research and professional practice next one here is, here is graduation outcome outreach and inclusivity and peer perception so these are the five important parameters so now let us move on to next topic it is regarding time for vigilance so this article which is mainly talking about monkey pox virus so recently in yesterday's lecture we studied that so there is a first case which may identified in india regarding this monkey pox virus this topic is important from your health which mainly comes in your gs paper 2 and even from your science and technology so as you all know the background india reported its first laboratory confirmed case of monkey pox virus when a 35 year old man in kerala capital he tested positive and actually he said that yes he had contact with an infected person in uae okay so this is about context and if you talk about guidelines how can we prevent this uh, monkey pox virus here recently center for disaster control and prevention which mainly came up with various guidelines like so we need to go for regular sense regular sanitization and even we need to avoid the direct physical contact with the person okay who is suffering from this monkey pox virus and we need to avoid the contact with the pets also and even some gay and bisexual men they are at a higher risk of catching this monkey pox infection okay and next one here is if you're talking about this monkey pox virus which mainly belongs to orthopox virus genus and family that is poxy viridae family and this monkey pox is thought to be spread by small rodents but not from the monkeys and why it is a cause of concern so monkey pox it is uncommon disease which mainly reaches a lot of concerns across the world okay so this monkey pox outbreaks they mostly occur in the west and as well as central africa so occasionally it mainly spreads every elsewhere but there is a large amount of spread of this virus which already had seen and this is the image of this monkey pox virus under microscope so if you see it, uh, transmission so how this is transmitted the transmission which mainly occurs whenever you are coming with a direct close contact with your infected animal like rodents monkeys etc and this one here is us centers for disease control and prevention which mainly said that there is a spread of monkey pox virus if you are coming in the contact with the body fields uh, and as well body fluids and as well as monkey pox sores and even some shared items like clothing bleeding etc okay so this is about this topic and now let us move on to the next interesting topic that is iran and belarus to be newest sco members so this article is very important from your international relations which mainly comes in your gs paper too so if you see context it mainly says that iran and belarus they are likely to be the two newest additions to china and russia back at sanjay cooperation organization to this seo there are two new members that is iran and as well as belarus so this is the news so actually if you open your syllabus of international relations yes there is a column that is you have to go to the international organizations so in that international organization you can talk about asia you can talk about seo okay so here sc which is mainly part of your syllabus and if there is any development which is seen in the news you have to make a note here so the recent new two members of this sco are iran and as well as belarus so if you see the context it mainly says that 
okay so iran and belarus they are likely to be the new two newest additions to this shanghai cooperation organization so china russia and four other central asian countries like kazakhstan kyrgyzstan uzbekistan and as tajikistan but turkmenistan it is not part here so you have to remember that and this is a one important films question okay so they so actually these countries so these russia china kazakhstan kyrgyzstan uzbekistan tajikistan they were the founding members of this seo so why india and pakistan they joined this grouping in year 2017 so the first round of expansion which is mainly seen in 2017 and the last year summit in this uh, dushan bay agreed for iran to join okay and now here belarus also had begun the process of forgetting membership under this seo so what is this seo what are the objectives of this seo So SCO it is nothing but Shanghai Cooperation Organization. It is a permanent intergovernmental international organization. And actually, this SCO it is an European, it is a European political, economic, and as well as military organization. And it is mainly focusing on to maintain peace and as well stability in the region. So actually, it was created in two thousand one, and they came with the charter. Okay, charter means nothing but written commitment in two thousand two. and what are these objectives so objectives are nothing but we need to focus on mutual trust we need to focus on neighborliness and even we need to promote some effective cooperation in politics trade and economy research and technology and as well as culture so we are also going to focus on education energy transport tourism environmental protection etc and we need to maintain and ensure the peace security and as well as stability in the region and especially we need to focus on democratic fair and as well as rational new international political and economic order and if you're talking about membership as i said kazakhstan kyrgyzstan tajikistan uzbekistan china russia india pakistan and recently iran they are the members of this seo so actually in 2022 there was one question which appeared in this topic uh, okay so now let us try to have a look over this uh, question so asian infrastructure investment bank Missile Technology Control Regime, that is MTCR, is the Shanghai Cooperation Organization. So India is member of which of the following above? That is India is member of AIIB, India is member of MTCR, and as well as the Shanghai Cooperation Organization. So option D is the correct answer. So in this way also you can expect questions in your prelims. And now let us try to see today's questions. The first one is regarding Chittagong Armoury Raid. Chittagong so Armoury Raid. Here you have to see the persons which who are associated with that. Yes, Kalpana Dutt or Dutta. Next one is Mahila Rashtriya Sangh that is by Sarojini Naidu, with India Movement by Aruna Asaf Ali. So yes, all these three are correct matches. And the next question it is regarding this Mapilla Revolt. So during Mapilla Revolt, okay. it is a revolt of peasants was directed against landlords only but it is not only landlords but even against the government so this second st first statement is incorrect and second statement here is revolt acquired communal color thus resulted in isolation from khilafat non cooperation movement yes this statement is correct so the option is to two only and now let us try to see today's practice question the first one is regarding swaraj party second one is regarding round table conference So try to read these statements and give me the correct option in the comment box. And now I want to make a very small announcement on this platform. We in Rathod's IS we came up with this foundational course for 2022-2023. So this course is absolutely beneficial, and you can believe us. So 100%, I can assure you that. So after watching these lectures that we are providing under this foundational course, so you will be getting concept clarity for sure. So. If you are starting at the zero level, also after you are completing this foundational course, you will be in a position that you can write any answer in the any answer from any topic that is present in your GS for sure. So this is our assurance. So we are giving hundred percent assurance. That assurance you cannot get anywhere. And one more thing here is we are focusing on conceptual clarity. So conceptual clarity is very very important, especially to clear your prelims and as well as mains. so means it is a deciding factor whether you will be there in the list or not so please don't take this course as an opt uh, don't take this uh, course as a choice so please try to grab this opportunity 
and one more thing here is uh, if you have joined this foundation course you will be also getting one year mains answer writing course for free and even prelims test series so you will be getting twin advantages if you are getting into this course and the cost of this course here is 49,000 and the validity is two years so it's a very very affordable price and also accessible for all so try to join this course as soon as possible without any delay so if you have any doubts regarding this course so please call me on this number 8074765513 and this is also the whatsapp number and you can also text me on this number so this course is highly beneficial try to join this so if you want to watch the demo videos you can visit our website rathorsisacademy.com there you can register with your email id and you can watch three demo videos which are of free of cost okay so and if you want to get the pdf of this class you can join the telegram channel link is given in the description box and now let us try to see the today's hindu newspaper pdf so this is our today's hindu date here is july 16 2022 and this is delhi edition okay so the first article it is regarding so the first article it is regarding goat by a quits Ranil Stone, Ranil Swan in as acting president of Sri Lanka. I hope you can see this article very clear now. Okay, so here this article says that good by Rajpaksha is officially resigned as Sri Lankan president. And now here parliamentary speaker, he announced that there is ending days of uncertainty. Okay, so he resigned. So here Rajpaksha, he resigned. And now here after once the president who is resigned so yes we need to come up with acting president so here ran nail sworn in as acting president okay of sri lanka and if you move here you can see one more article that is regarding iitm ranked country's top higher education institute so here i discussed about this nirf list so first one is iit madras second one is bangalore third one is iit bombay Next one here is second one is IASC Bangalore, third, uh, fourth one is IIT, Tech, IIT Delhi, fifth one is IIT Kanpur, sixth one is IIT Karakpur, uh, next one is Rukri, this one is Guwahati. Okay, so these are the rankings that you can go through. I discussed about this topic in detail. And now let us move on and let us try to see some more important articles. So here you can see 57-year-old bridge across the Godav River has been closed in the view of heavy flooding in this Badra Chalam town in Telangana. So I will be zooming this image so that you will be having a clear picture here. So here what happens? So this is the bridge which mainly built 57 years, okay? 57 years old bridge. So actually because of the heavy rains in this Telangana state and because of the heavy flooding that you can be seen in the number of... Uh, of number of rivers and actually there are number of uh, lakes which are also have been some ending uh, some facing dangers okay so what happened here so actually this badachala which is now in the heavy flooding so because of this they mainly closed this bridge and there is no no access to this badachala now okay so this is about this topic and now let us try to move forward so if you move forward in this city page there is nothing much important and if you move forward in the states page also there is nothing much important and you can see here one article that is monkey pox kerala is on high alert monkey pox kerala on high alert so this article which mainly talks about monkey pox i already you know that so the first so the first uh, lab case of uh, monkey pox which mainly found in this Kerala. So confirmation of this monkey pox virus that is seen in 35 year old man who is native of this column districts. So here you have to focus on this infography. So here you can see once you will once you get this monkey pox you will be getting the lesions like this. So here this infection can be divided into two periods. First one is invasion period and second one is skin eruption. So invasion period that is between the 0 to 5 days. So in this 0 to 5 days we can see or we can experience fever, intense headaches, lymphadenopathy, back pain, myalgia, intense, uh, intense asthenia. So next one here is after 1 to 3 days of fever. So you will be getting skin eruption, skin rations will be present. Okay, so how it spreads, it mainly spreads from animal to person through animal bites or scratches and eating products of uh, animals which are made up of these animals and direct contact with the contact with the body fields or rashes. 
and from person to person also we can see this mainly transmitted because of this direct contact with the rashes caps of uh, body fluids okay etc so now let us move forward so if you move forward in this editorial page you can see one article regarding this uh, russia ukraine so if you want you can go to this article and if you see the next article it is regarding monkey pox for us i discussed this topic and here you can see one article regarding this hate speech already number of times we discussed about this hate speech article in our hindi analysis and it is time for you to revise and if you move forward in this news page there is nothing much important and in this a newspaper that is a page number 9 here you can see one article that is about bangladesh on push on path of modernization so as this article says that the socio economic development which is mainly seen in this bangladesh so this is a thing which mainly said by our defense minister and he also said that our neighboring countries they are struggling with the regional fanatism and bigotry and even narrow mindedness so the country itself is struggling with poverty unemployment terrorism and sometimes we are also trying to harass india as well okay so some countries like pakistan which are mainly having these challenges and also they are trying to harass india so here that country need to introspect and learn a lot from this bangladesh so here our defense minister he mainly made a note to pakistan that so pakistan need to learn the things from this bangladesh okay so defense minister said that india as a neighbor it was very much happy that bangladesh which is mainly moving fast on the path of development okay so this is the one important thing that you have to see and here there is a one perspective you can develop here is so you have to refer regarding this india bangladesh relations okay so this is about this topic and here you can see one more article which is important i hope you can see very much clear on the screen now so india china military talks on july 17th so your 16th round of military talks between india and china on the lingering border standoff in eastern ladakh will be held on july 17th on july 17th we are going to have the next round of military talks between india and china so india has been pressing for dis for quick disengagement of troops from all the remaining friction points and we want to establish peace and national tranquility across this border so this is about this topic and once here this meet meet done means we will be getting some articles don't worry about that and now let us move forward and let us try to see this article so this article it is very very important that is regarding rise in unvaccinated children in india i hope you can see very much clear right so here the number of children in india who were unvaccinated or those children who are mainly missed their first dose of dtp that is diphtheria tetanus and pertussis vaccine okay it is a combined vaccine of diphtheria tetanus pertussis okay dtp vaccine and here because of this pandemic which mainly led to rising of children who didn't took this vaccine that is unvaccinated children number had been increased and due to this pandemic okay it mainly says that from 1.4 million in 2019 to 2.7 million in 2021 okay so this is a one important cause of concern we can say here okay nearly 25 million children they were born each year in india so until the pandemic india steadily improved this immunization coverage from 43 percentage in this uh, survey that is national family health survey 3 to 62 percentage in this national family health survey 4 okay so what happened now you are mainly having this cause of concern there is increasing of unvaccinated children okay so this is a one important thing here because of this uh, because of this uh, especially covid 19 pandemic and lockdowns that led to decreasing of vaccination of this dtp diphtheria pertussis uh, diphtheria tetanus and pertussis and we can see here 25 million children they missed out of one or more doses of this dtp through routine immunization service alone so you have to let me know what will be the concerns so if there is no proper vaccination and now let us move forward and let us try to see some more important articles in the newspaper so here you can see iran belarus to be the newest seo members i discussed this topic and if you move forward in this business page you can see 
so chinese covid curbs retard q2 growth that is because of this uh, curbs of this uh, covid 19 pandemic in china it has some negative impact on the growth in the second quarter and here you can see the article that is regarding rush rupees slide to inflate import and global travel bills so this topic it is at most important let me zoom this topic okay so i hope you can see now so here nearly okay rupee which mainly depreciation of the rupee which mainly happened and now one dollar is equal to 80 rupees right so what happened because of this depreciation whatever the imports that we are getting from other countries so imports become costly imports become very much cost so especially if you are getting our more than 75 to 80 percentage of the crude oil from especially the other countries okay we are importing them so the import cost of this crude oil which is mainly going to increase and even electronic goods electronic goods as well so the impact of this depreciation of the rupee it is on importers who will have to shell out more same quantity and as well as price so because of this uh, depreciation of rupee that mainly going to increase import cost and uh, if you're talking about imports of india it mainly includes like crude oil we are importing and even coal we are importing plastic material chemicals electronic goods vegetable oils uh, fertilizer machinery gold and as well as pearls and even precious and semi-precious stones, iron and steel. So these are some important items or the items in the basket of our imports. So because of the weakening of rupee, which also means the foreign education becoming some more expensive. So it is also one cause of concern. And students, they do not only have to shell out the more rupees for every dollar of fees at foreign institutions, but even they have to contend with the cost of education loans, okay, etc. So here the travel cost will be going to increase and education cost going to increase and even the import bill also going to be increased. So this is about the topic regarding the Sarupi depreciation. Okay, so these are some important articles that appear in our today's Hindu newspaper. I hope you enjoyed this lecture. So please subscribe to Rathod's IS Academy and don't forget to like, share and comment my videos. So if you are new to our channel, so try to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon so that you will be getting the regular notifications from the Rathod's IS. So by this I am concluding. Thank you so much.